Hello, my art loving friends. How are you today? So I did a live stream where I featured the new A Gallo classic set of 12 watercolors that I received. And I know that not everyone out there can watch an hour and eight long minute video. So I have condensed that video into this video for you if you would rather watch this one instead. I will link the original video up in the corner and in the description box below in case you do want to watch an hour and eight minute long video. People tell me it was pretty amusing. <laughs> But for the rest of you, here's this shorter version and I hope you enjoy it. So I have a couple of goodies here. I have a gift, uh, so thank you very much. We'll open that here in a second. So this is the birthday gift that I received in my PO box from one of you. <laughs> you know who you are. And I haven't opened it yet. I wanna see what it is. It's so cute. Oh, I love cactus, little cacti. Better garden life. Gary, Jerry, Gary Moo, Gary Moo. I don't know how to say that, but oh, how fun. It's a little art tote. All these pockets on the outside. So with my re-inventory and stuff right now, I'm trying to put things in better places. So this could be really handy. It's so cute. Well, thank you. And then the second cool fun thing that I teased you guys with, which is why probably most of you are here, this is that A Gallo set. And I think I told my Patreons that I had bought this for myself, but I don't think I told anyone else. I can't remember. Cute little thank you. So we get a Han Purple lab sample card about their history and the goods. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's heavy. Cute little box. Okay, so I bought the classic 12 half pan set from them. And this is what it looks like so far. So welcome to the classic collection. Maximum mixing range and versatility. Okay, free of cadmium, cobalt, lead, and mercury. So they do have gum arabic, kasha tree, and honey, and rosemary. They're typical beautiful packaging. How many of you guys have a gallo paints out there? Very nice. Will this slide out? Yes, it will. And... <laughs> it's so nice that they make a swatch sheet that'll fit inside their palettes. They really know us artists, right? We usually stick them in our palettes. Oh, even this one comes with a fancy brush. I'm trying to figure out how to get this out of here. Screw off? Is it pull off? <laughs> well, it's really in there. Screw off. It's not unscrewing very easily. Okay, it's a pull out. It's just nice and snug. All right, let's snap that in there. So it's a round size six. That's nice. Tintoretto brush. It's typical. I think that's what they usually put in their kits. And then here are the beautiful colors. Aren't they gorgeous? The reason I chose this one, and I went back and forth a lot between their different sets, was that it had the dark brown and the, I think that's a Payne's Gray, not an Indigo. I'm pretty sure it's a Payne's Gray because I don't think I would have chosen. Yeah, here we go. Burnt Umber and the Payne's Gray. Those were the two that I was very specifically looking for. And then I like that they basically have a split primary. I teach my students that in my watercolor class at the college. It's nice that I have them in this set as well. Plus some fun other colors down here. I wondered if you could just push these out of these sleeves. Now, one of you, so helpful, and I was so grateful, but you said that like some of these are attached on the sides and they're meant to stay there. This one doesn't look like they're glued on the sides because what you could do is peel the top off and then the sides are meant to stay on. But I think that was with Rosa Gallery. Uh, let's open this up. What is this color anyway? Lemon yellow. Bring it down here. I want to go clear to the edges. I got to remember that because I want it to be very square. A little dust on this paper. What I'm using for the paper right now is a 12 by 16 arches block. All right, and a little salt up that right side. Doesn't show much on yellow usually, but sometimes it surprises you, right? So this one is Indian yellow. Sorry, my mouth got really close to the phone there. Hopefully it didn't blow your eardrums out. Okay, so I didn't get much paint on my brush, so that's why it's not coming through there, but get some more. I'm not sure how strong to make these swatches either. Like I 
like seeing the super light tone too, but do I go back and dab at the top? This is the question I ask myself every time I do these is what do I want to see? Like, what do I really want to see? This is vermilion red. Okay. Oh, this color. Oh, look how pretty that is. Wow. So pretty. To make sure I go clear to the edges, get my nice square edges going. So I'm not sure if I really want to do any more than that on this one because that's pretty nice. Maybe just leave it. Well, I'll go over it one more time. <laughs> what would you guys have done? Would you have left it or would you have gone over it one more time? Permanent Carmine. PV19. These have the labeling on them for the pigment. Wow. Oh, sweet. It looks handwritten too. Holy moly. That's a lot of work for them to do. Well, that's cool. So you won't get confused about the pigment at least that you have on your paper or your in your pan. I mean, wow, that's so pretty. Oops. Drop some. So I was going to do this watercolor project where I would just get out all of my yellows and do all the yellows at one time. That would be really fun and those are also very popular on YouTube. So I enjoy watching them. You guys probably watch Jay Nathan and uh, V over at Paint and Hiding does some of those kind of comparisons. And for some reason, they're really enjoyable. I mean, like I said, I enjoy them. I thought I would do that, but it's like, man, getting new watercolor set, I'm going to swatch it anyway, then I should just go ahead <laughs> and do it on my watercolor project paper. Oh, I forgot the salt. Hopefully it's not too late. While I'm doing it, so they don't have to keep redoing it over and over again, because it's a lot of work, right? This next one here is Transparent Cerulean. And during the live stream, I was just chatting about subscription boxes and how they add up <laughs> and add up supplies. So I missed telling you guys that this was transparent cerulean until the very end so anyway i just cut all that chatter out and there you can see the swatch it's a beautiful color isn't it just really really nice i think it'd be great for skies who knows what all ultramarine blue Let's see what their ultramarine looks like it's probably quite pretty also i noticed my new camera not the one I'm filming with right now, but the one that I did the last video with the Nikon I showed you at the beginning of this live stream. Picks up a lot more sound than my old camera that I was using on the channel. So like with the new camera, I swallow and you guys can hear it if I don't edit it out of the video. So I'm having to edit a little bit more out than I was used to with the other one. What do you guys think of these colors so far? Excited about this green. It looks like a green that I could really love. Chromium Oxide is what this one's called, and it's a PG-17. Okay, here we go. Ooh. Okay, so I see what you guys mean. It's a very opaque feeling and probably opaque looking. It'll probably tell us here. Not on that. I'll have to look at the other information. Yeah, it's it's different. Wow, that, that got strong. I think I'll stop right there. Be curious to see what this looks like when it dries. And this one here is the Viridian Hue. It's a PG9 mixed with a PB29. So pretty interesting Viridian Hue. Quite pretty actually, I like it a lot. So this is yellow ochre. So on the paper, it just says PY43, but this one says PY43B. <laughs> I barely made it into my driveway last night. And my husband had plowed it even. And I had a, so I had my pickup, but I had my snowmobile on the back. So I had weight on the pickup, which should help, right? Should help you get traction. But man, barely made it into my parking spot. There was about 
five feet up where we were snowmobiling. You know, if you dug straight down to the ground, there's a little over five feet of snow in most of the places, a little more than that in some others, and then it was just snowing the whole time we were up there this weekend. So, lots of snow up there. So this is PBR7, Burnt Sienna. PBR7. That's a beautiful reddish burnt sienna. And I prefer my burnt siennas to be a little reddish. So I really like this one so far. We'll see what it looks like when it dries. A color that I wouldn't say is my favorite because it's just not a favorite color, but it's one I use constantly and all the time in my paintings is this dark brown. And this one happens to be the burnt umber PBR7 again. Really impressed with that chrome oxide. It is turning out to be quite lovely as it dries. You were right, Beth. That's pretty. Okay, this is really pretty. I didn't get very much on my brush then, but that's quite pretty. I love me a good dark brown. I always, always, always want a good dark brown in my palette. Payne's Gray. PB15-1, PBK7, and I think that's a PB... 19. Let's go look at, oh, it's not on this one. Shoot. It's in the dark part of the swatch. Okay. I'm so excited about this one. You guys, I love Payne's Grays. Are you ready? Let's see. Let's see. Get some water on the subject. Okay. A little cat hair in it. Never heard anything. Yep. Got some cat hair. That's all right. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. There's a song about that. It's an old song. Look at that. Look at that. That's so pretty. Very blue tinted, which I love blue tinted Payne's Grays. Okay, I'll leave it at that, even though I just want to keep going again and again and again. Payne's Gray is beautiful. Let me, I don't know if there's any sense getting different angles or not on it. Ah, oh, I knocked off my computer. So yeah, that's a PV19. Okay. Oh, and the Yinmin Blue, which I don't have a place for until I take off these intersections. But I did swatch it when I received it. But let me swatch it for you down here. So this little Yinmin Blue thing is precious. It's a very expensive color. And I was very fortunate to have received it as a gift. So thank you again. <laughs> oh, it's so pretty. Look how pretty. I almost didn't want to like use it to swatch it in my library, but you have to. You just have to. If you're going to do a library, you got to do all your colors, right? That's so pretty. Okay, I might as well do salt on that one too. So that won't be an official one, but I just have this extra space at the bottom because business card size, you don't get really good. Like there's no paper that's exactly business card size, you know? So there's the paint gray so far. It like I said, it's still drying a little bit, but it did darken up. It, like I said, went down bluish. It still has a bluish tint, but not as much as it did when it was wet. It's showing in your screen a little bluer than I'm seeing in person. So it is a little grayer than what you're seeing, in other words. But yeah, it still has a little blue in it. It's beautiful for a Payne's Gray. I mean, for a Payne's Gray and not an indigo, it's like perfect. It's exactly the color I would want my Payne's Gray to be, at least so far. So let me show you. I'll zoom out and you can see the others a little bit. So yeah, the salt effect on them is pretty stunning. And that, let me get you closer to that chromium oxide too and the burnt sienna. They're very pretty. Let's see. Yeah, I like them. Very pretty. So when this dried, like when I first had it on there, when it was wet, I was, I think I have the hiccups now. I wasn't sure what I thought of it. But dry, that's a pretty color. I I think I could get behind using that. And let me show you this gorgeous Yinmin Blue. Look at all that beautiful granulation. It is stunning. And I just put a little salt on this side. 
but all of this it did by itself. All right, that's a wrap. What do you guys think of Egg Gala watercolors? Have you used them yourself? I am really curious to know. I cannot wait to do a painting with them. I still haven't as of this video, but I am dying to, and that will be coming up eventually. In the meantime, if you haven't subscribed already and you wanna see a lot of fun upcoming watercolor goodies, consider subscribing down below by hitting that subscribe button and the bell notification, if you turn that to all, it will tell you every time I release a new watercolor or other related video. All right, guys, have a great day. I will see you in the next video. Bye for now. Where did this come from? Oh, the one I just opened. <laughs>